We received our Mantis bow roller, so the next step was to have steel custom cut to raise the bow roller so it sat flush with the tow rail. The template was made of cardboard and was then sent to a professional to cut the size and shape of the steel as well as to drill the holes. We had it powder coated in hopes of preventing rust. Knowing the boat for at least the first several years would be only on the Great Lakes, we're okay with this decision. We know that if we bring the boat south, we can swap it out for something more saltwater friendly. Then, we filled the anchor locker with our 250 feet of road and 25 feet of chain. It all fit with plenty of room to spare. So I just want to give you a little update on uh, something that I'm working on right now. I don't know if you guys remember, but I have a huge hole here. This is where an old uh, solar fan was, and it left a gap. I don't know why this was all open. Uh, nowhere else have I been able to find in the uh, cabin top has a huge gap like that. Uh, my plan is to fill it in. Uh, what I did right now is I shoved some cardboard on the four sides of this. So to kind of make like a square gap area, I taped off some little holes I've already pre-drilled. Um, and then I'm going to put this... It's actually a backer plate that I made. I've got some saran wrap on it and I'm gonna wedge this right up in there. So I'm gonna wedge it right up in there just like that. Saran wrap protects from any epoxy from sticking to these uh, backer plates so that I can remove it and everything should be good. So my plan is to fill this hole in with uh, expanding uh, epoxy. I found a company called Fiberglast and it's a two-part system. Uh, supposedly, they use it all over the world um, to fill in for uh, making foam buoy things, and uh, it's, it's used a lot in the marine world from what I read. And it's super strong. It's actually, I think, 100 pounds per square inch compression that you can do, uh, which is way more than I'll need for this little area. It's only gonna have a clutch here. Um, but I wanted to fill this gap in so that there's not, there's something in between it um, to squish against the backer plate and the clutch when I tighten everything down. This is the two-part system. Uh, like I said, it's from fiberglass. Uh, you've got your part A, your part B side. You mix them in equal proportions. And I think that's it. But it says it stands up to polyester, epoxy, vinyl, ester, resins. It's waterproof when it's done. Uh, it won't absorb water or anything like that. So I think this is going to be a perfect application for it. Uh, I thought I was going to need, need, I bought this. There's a smaller kit, but I bought this thinking I was going to need more around the top deck. But this is the only spot I found that has this big gap. Um, under the winches, it was pretty solid, uh, both sides. And then under the other clutch on the other side, it was solid as well. So I'm not sure why this area has this big gap here. So here we go. Okay, so I've got my two mixing containers. Directions basically say you have to mix equal parts in one container, equal parts in the other container, um, and then you mix them together. Uh, it says you can use a uh, like a drill mixer, or for smaller quantities you can do it by hand. Um, you wait for the heat. It says about after a minute it will heat up. When it's heated, you pour it into the cavity. Uh, so I'm going to try to do this and videotape it at the same time for you. Closer, you can see it's starting to bubble and I think that's the expanding part of it but you can see a lot of it uh, flow down the side there at this point the only thing we can do is wait for it to expand as you can see about two minutes has gone by and uh, it's expanded quite a bit so I'd say the hole is about a quarter of the way filled it looks like it's still going. So 
the stuff does expand. I'll be curious to see how hard it actually is when it's all set up. And I'm kind of debating now if I'm going to uh, pour another batch right on top of this one and have them both kind of expand together. Or if I wait for that to cure and do it. Uh, not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. So as you can see, I uh, went ahead and I did a second round of it real quick. And the only reason I did is because this middle was expanding where this hole is, but there was a gap over here that wasn't fill filling up yet. So I quickly mixed up another four ounces and I dumped it down on this side and it poured down in there. And then as you can see, it expanded and, and it must have filled in that gap because it's coming through the holes, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, and then over here, I just poured the rest in over here, fill in all this gap here. So this should all be pretty solid when it all hardens up. Um, and then when I put my clutch there and my backer plate on the other side and clamp down, it's not going to be clamping over a hollow uh, space. It's now going to have this, uh, which should be pretty hard foam that's supposed to withstand, you know, 100 pounds a square inch. Um, you know, and if you look at this area, we're looking at like six inches or so. Um, you know, maybe more than that once you have the backer plate on the back side. Um, so I think it's, it's going to do its job. Um, my other plan was to cut this all out completely and then fill it, uh, you know, with uh, plywood or like a foam, not a foam board, but a, like a PVC board um, that wouldn't rot and then epoxy it all in there um, a few times and then put the top back on and then I would have to fiberglass all this out here to make it look, you know, good. With this, it shouldn't be bad. I can just go ahead once this all dries and cut this all flush to the top and then uh, go ahead and fill this part in with some fairing uh, compound and get this nice and smooth here and then paint it um, and mount the, the clutch. Once the foam hardened, Dennis then took a hacksaw and cut it flush with the deck top. The next project was mounting clutches and winches. We needed to drill holes through the combing so that our lines would sit as flat on the deck as we could get them. So we used a Sharpie to guide exactly where we would start drilling. Then we had to make sure we had enough distance between the winch and the clutch. We were hoping for 10 to 12 inches, but we took the 9 inches that we had to work with. We burned through several hole saw bits drilling through the combing, but we're very happy with the outcome. It gives us a nice finished look and should help extend the life of our lines. Next, we installed backing plates for our winches using the same G10 that we used for our seacocks. We lined up the turning blocks, but we never ended up installing them. It can wait till next season. Next up, we installed our mast organizers and our electrical wire connections through the deck. We have one organizer on each side of the mast with four connections on each. Finally, we installed our traveler over the companionway. This was pretty expensive and Dennis had to buy parts from numerous sources, but we're super happy with the results. It helps keep the cockpit clear. The winch holders needed some love, so we took them down, scrubbed them, and brought them back to life. We were super excited to mount our new B&G instruments. We installed the wind sensor while the mast was down at the shop. Then we were concerned about how to get the wires for the instruments through our deck without any water getting in and also allowing us a way to disconnect the wires each season when we take the mast down. We found these rubber clam connections. These are great because you can drill the size hole you need for the size wire you're using, then you insert your wire. Dennis made a mount for our B&G GPS puck and installed it in the center bottom of our boat in a lazarette. We also installed our B&G multi-sensor through our hull to track our speed over ground and depth. The exciting project was the B&G displays. We went with the Triton 2 kit. It came complete with everything we needed for wind, speed of our boat, location and direction, as well as two display screens. We did a lot of research and chose B&G because the screens are crisp, modern looking, and very bright with minimal energy usage. That's all for this week, but don't forget to subscribe to Sailing Chaos and click the bell icon to get notifications when we put out a new video.